send you to the IBM Star Watch. And of course, who else to begin with when we're talking about the Orange Jay than Johnny Flynn? No, not a single player has shown more heart or courage in this Big East Championship than Johnny Flynn. He is the most important and vital player for Syracuse and for Louisville. Earl Clark is the most talented player, and he has played extraordinarily well here at this championship, averaging over 20 points per game and eight and a half assists. For the starting lineup tonight, back to the PA announcer, Ken Weprin. Let's now meet the starting lineups first for Syracuse. And forward, a 6'9 junior from Lanham, Maryland. Number 21, Arinze Anawaku. At forward, the 6'9 sophomore from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Double zero, Rick Jackson. At forward, the 6'5 junior from Niagara Falls, New York. Number 11, Paul Harris. At guard, the 6'4 junior from Bay City, Michigan. Number 23, Eric Devendorf. And at guard, the six-foot sophomore from Niagara Falls, New York, number 10, Johnny Flynn. The head coach of the Orange is Jim Behind. And now, here's the starting lineup for the Louisville Cardinals. At forward, the 6'8 freshman from Jamaica, number 24, Samardo Samuel. At forward, the 6'9 junior from Plainfield, New Jersey. Number five, Earl Clark. At forward, the 6'6 senior from Seattle, Washington. Number one, Terrence Williams. At guard, a 6'1 junior from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Number 34, Jerry Smith. And at guard, a 5'10 senior from Moreno Valley, California. Number 33, Andre McGee. The head coach of the Cardinals is Rick Pitino. There you have it, the starters and coaches for the Orange and the Cardinals. You know, the headline writers here in New York City are awfully good and awfully creative, and they have come up with some good ones over the last couple of days, documenting this incredible run on which the Syracuse Orange have been. For more on what the Orange have been through the last 48 hours, here's Doris Burke. Well, Dan, to say that last 48 hours has been eventful, eventful will probably be a bit of an understatement, beginning with that six-overtime victory against the Connecticut Huskies that did not end until 1.22 in the morning. So what did that mean? They got back to the hotel approximately 2.45 in the morning. They got off their feet, went to sleep. The athletic training staff at 10 a.m. started something they called active regeneration, which was a process of trying to get their muscles revived, fluid hydration.
frustration. They get back to the garden about uh, 7.30 for that 9.36 tip. Thankfully, just one overtime last night, meaning a 1.15 a.m. arrival. A similar schedule the next day, except the focus this time after that 10 a.m. wake-up call was on ice baths and massages. The players really took to those ice baths, so they did that. 4.30 team meeting. Now, where do you think the Syracuse assistant coaching staff found Johnny Flynn this afternoon? In the weight room of their hotel doing some light lifting and stretching. And when Rob Murphy had the temerity to ask Johnny Flynn, was he okay? He said, Coach, what are you talking about? There's nothing I like to do more in this world than play basketball. Let's go get ourselves a championship tonight. Kids today, huh? Johnny Flynn. And we should point out that the night before, he was up almost the entire night. He was just wired, couldn't get to sleep. By all accounts, Johnny Flynn says he had a great night's sleep last night. So we'll see how he responds. You know he's playing 40 or maybe more than 40 minutes, depending on how far this one goes against the pressure of the Cardinals. And not surprisingly, Syracuse starts out in a 2-3 zone. Here comes Flynn. Flynn will break the record for the most minutes ever played in this tournament at the 10-minute mark of the first half tonight. The three zone also for Louisville, just a bit more active. Flynn the kick, Dievendorf's going to get a wide open look, Syracuse strikes first. A perfect start for Syracuse, the penetration along the baseline, kicking it back out to a defense that had been flattened out. Louisville a 10-point winner over Syracuse in Syracuse during the regular season. The Cardinals took a ton of threes in that game, didn't make all that many of them, just 8 for 31, but they still won the game. It's a Syracuse 3 that opens the scoring here tonight, Jay. This defense extends with the drive, everybody underneath the free throw line. When they are, when the ball is kicked back out, Dievendorf could step into that shot and get off a clean one. Full court pressure from Louisville. You're going to see it all night long. They are deeper than Syracuse. And Syracuse may rely on guys other than Flynn. A little Devendorf, a little Routens, a little Harris to help bring the ball up. What a start for Devendorf! There are not many offensive players that enjoy the big stage as much as Eric Devendorf. He is fearless with the ball in his hands. And he has had some very big games in this building, in this tournament over the last couple of years. 19 or more points each of his last five Big East Championship games. Samuel is too strong inside, run down in the corner, and a fresh 35 for Louisville. That baseline is going to be open all night. Williams off to Clark, wasn't expecting it. There's the baseline again, they close on Samuels in a hurry. Little Clark in the middle, he can make things happen from that spot. Earl Clark has been magnificent in this championship. He is such a talented player. And when he catches the ball, he's not just a shooter scorer, he's also an outstanding passer. Well, you have made the point often this week that Louisville's two best playmakers are their forwards, Terrence Williams and Earl Clark, and they figure to be the guys catching and facing at the foul line in the middle of that zone. They will definitely be there. They can put others there as well. But most coaches would rather have the ball in the hands of their guards, but not so for Louisville. They are very comfortable having the hands of the ball at uh, the ball in the hands of their forwards. And that was Williams finding Smith, who gets the friendly bounce for the three. How good was Gary Smith last night? 16 points, four of seven from three. He is a much different player over the last eight or nine games. Now a steal, and Jerry Smith in for the dunk. You cannot do anything lazily in this game, Dan. Not one thing. You throw a lazy pass, you are passing it straight to Louisville, and you should get an assist for the Cardinals. The Louisville players know they've got a lot of reinforcements on the bench. The Syracuse team will go seven deep, and, and let's throw this out there. In this tournament, Louisville has played 80 minutes, two games coming into this game. Syracuse has played three games, but 155 minutes because of all the overtimes. They've played almost twice as many minutes as the Cardinals. Good job by Samuels to back up and get the ball to Clark in the middle. 6-0 run to start it for the Orange, a 7-0 run to take the lead for the Cardinals. One of the ways that Louisville can wear Syracuse down is to run really good offense. They have got to score efficiently in order to get their press on. And the more they press, the more they can wear down Johnny Flynn. Well, Harris going to the rim, follows it up, and it rolls off the rim for Harris. And we had a lot of bad luck like that a couple of nights ago against UConn. Did everything but finish. And that's one thing that Jim Beheim has been all over Paul Harris about. He's got to finish plays. Clark got inside very easily. Found Samuels who lays it in. 
And Rich Pitino has been working with Samardo Samuels about finishing above the rim. He felt like he was playing like a below-the-rim player early in the season. And he has been improving throughout the year. A 9 to nothing run right now for Louisville. Evendorf bumps into Jim Burr, misses the three, and here comes Jerry Smith. Jim Burr, Bob Donato, and Ed Corbett, the officials here tonight. And we've got a foul going against Evendorf to take us to our first timeout, timeout of the night. Syracuse getting off to a great start, but Jerry Smith, 16 points last night, the friendly bounce in the championship game. And if you are loose with the ball, Louisville is going to take an East Championship and that trophy, which will be awarded to one of these two teams following the game tonight. If Syracuse is to win the trophy, they're going to have to, Jay, have some success breaking that Louisville pressure. Well, Louisville is going to bring the pressure. They like to trap, but they also like to keep the ball out of the hands of main handlers, and that's Johnny Flynn. Now, Johnny Flynn being guarded by Jerry Smith. When the ball is inbounded, Paul Harris has to come back to the ball to get it out of the hands of Arinziana Waku. Now, when he gets the ball, watch here. That's Jerry Smith. He's going to keep it away from Flynn. Then he's going to come trap. It's in the hands of a non-handler. They're going to make him bring it up. He's likely to make a mistake, or more likely, once Johnny Flynn gets it back, he's in attack mode. If he gets to the middle of the floor, that's where Flynn can do his most damage. I think Louisville's got to keep him out of the middle of the floor, keep him up the sideline where he can't see as much, and his passes are going to be longer. Three subs for Louisville, Terrence Jennings, Preston Knowles, Edgar Sosa. Two subs for Syracuse and Andy Routens, the sharpshooter, and Christoph Anjanon. Terrence Jennings did a really nice job in the ball game against Villanova. Had eight points, three blocks, three offensive rebounds, and he was extraordinarily active in the second half. There's Williams in the middle. Nice kick to the corner. Knowles, who led the Big East in three-point percentage this year, has that one roll around and out. Just getting the ball into the middle, especially in the hands of Williams, really collapses everything, and he can find people. He's their assist leader, and in fact, ranked among Big East assist leaders this season. The only forward in the top 15 of the conference in assists. Held by Jennings. Flynn can't turn the corner. Now he cradles it, drives, kicks to Devendorf. And that's the clock here. It's at five. The pull-up for Johnny Flynn, wide right. It grazed the rim, so the shot clock resets, but Louisville's got the ball. Right, what a what a job by Jennings to fight for that ball. Jennings with some good moments already in there off the bench along with Knowles and Sosa, Williams and Clark. The two starters still in there. Jennings inside, good patience, and it's a five-point lead for Louisville. And he's just getting better and better. And he's keeping it simple. Goes after the offensive glass, looks to block shots. He goes to the glass on both ends every time a shot goes up. Eric Devendorf hit two threes to open the scoring. Syracuse has not scored since an 11 0 run. Anjanat, a nice pass inside to Jackson. And Christoph Anjanat has been one of the unsung heroes for Syracuse over the last three days. He comes in and impacts the game. The first time he caught the ball in the middle of the zone, he dribbled it. And it was difficult for him once he picked up that dribble to do anything because he was a stationary player. That last time he caught, he faced, and immediately passed in a high-low set for an easy basket. Terrence Williams misses the three, and what an amazing follow tap by Preston Knowles on the baseline. Anjanat didn't look back and didn't get a body on Knowles. He just ran right in unimpeded. Anjanat again, a nice pass inside. Jackson again. Well, he only makes that mistake once. When he caught and dribbled, that was an error by Anjanat, but he's made two great plays in the middle of that zone. He didn't hesitate at all on that one. He had it, knew what he wanted to do with it as soon as he got it. He had four assists against West Virginia. He made a lot of really good passes. The Orange will stay in the 2-3 all night. Been in the 2-3 all week. This is their fourth game in as many nights for Louisville. Their third game in as many nights. Knowles can't get the shot off. Terrence Williams can. This is another three. Anjanat the rebound. Where has he been struggling? Three of his last 17 here in New York. He has only 11 points in this tournament. Andy Routens the miss. And Jackson, the strong follow for the Orange. Timeout Louisville. The Orange are right back in it here at the Garden.
Now the Syracuse scoring began with a couple of Devendorf threes. Then it was all Louisville for a while, but now Syracuse is right back in it. Rick Jackson, Jay, with three consecutive buckets for Syracuse. Well, Rick Jackson is known as a great weak side rebounder. He led the Big East in Big East competition in field goal percentage, shooting 67% from the field. He takes good shots. He's a strong finisher inside and really does a nice job of using his body when a shot goes up of Beck essentially boxing out as an offensive player to get an offensive rebound. Well, Jay, look what we have here. Seven minutes into the game. Johnny Flynn is on the bench right now. Johnny Flynn has not been on the bench since early in the Thursday game against Connecticut. Early in the six-overtime game. It was in the first half of that game. You know he's not going to be out for long, but obviously Jim Beheim feels or wants to make sure that Johnny Flynn's got enough left near the end of the game. Andy Routens with a rebound, so Eric Diemendorf becomes the primary ball handler right now as Johnny Flynn looks on to the bench, a spot he does not occupy very often. Anawaku has returned. Routens open. Sosa the rebound, Knowles out ahead of the pack. Oh, and a foul called on Andy Routens. And he got all ball up top. But Routens was looking maybe to get that rebound. He knew he missed it. And that allowed Knowles to sneak out behind him. Just got him a tad with the body. But that was a perfect block up top. And Behan not happy with that call. Two shots coming for Preston Knowles. One of the four guards. They all see about equal court time for Rick Pitino. Knowles maybe the best shooter and maybe the best defender of the group as Jared Swampshire is now taking over for Earl Clark. And Rick Pitino substitutes generously throughout a ball game that keeps his players fresh and really keeps the heat on an opponent and that's going to take your legs away as you get toward the end of the game all of a sudden an 18 foot jump shot that was going 18 feet is going now 17 and a half and a turnover no Flynn Syracuse coughs it up Sosa has it rejected by Harris but there for the follow is Knowles and the Louisville pressure is having a major impact on this game especially with the back tip they are always coming from behind to tip that ball away and there as you say Jay Syracuse breaks the pressure looking to score they didn't settle in the front court well that's the way you have to break pressure otherwise it'll completely wear you out you have to punish a team for pressing you by being efficient and breaking it to score Edgar Sosa around and out on the three. Rick Jackson with a strong rebound as we go to Doris Burke. Guys, philosophically, the Orange a little bit different in approaching that pressure. They only had 10 turnovers in a matchup with Louisville earlier. The lowest turnover forced by Louisville against an opponent this year. The reason being, they're opportunistic, Jay, only if they have numbers. Other than that, they're patient, guys. The three goes down to extend the lead to six. One of the things you want to make sure is you're always strong with the ball. When it goes inside, they are going to slap down at it. And on a Waku foul, he'll shoot free throws. When we come back, Louisville leads. The top 30 plays of the last 30 years. Number two, Charles rescues the Wolfpack. Five seconds left to Whitberg. Whitberg tries him out of 30-footer. No good step back. We will reveal Jay's number one play of the last 30 years tomorrow afternoon at 1 Eastern during the ACC championship game between Florida State and Duke. I guess we've kind of given it away. We know what it's going to be. Congratulations. You got me again. You had me convinced I was wrong last night. <laughs> After you said that Lorenzo Charles's dunk was for the national, national championship. championship, what could be yeah. better than that? And I, I was convinced you were right. But you know what? All, all the 30 and more. I mean, you could say we're tied. Unbelievable moments. Johnny Flynn back in. Was out barely a minute. Syracuse was outscored 7-2 while he was gone. Christoph Anjana makes it a four-point game. But Anjana's a guy, Jay, a few weeks ago. He was hardly playing at all. He's the seventh man in a seven-man rotation. But in that Connecticut game, most notably, he had some huge plays and some big minutes because uh, Anawaku and Jackson both fouled out at one point. We know he's keeping it simple. Yeah, he made that basket just by setting a screen and immediately looking for his offense. He sets a screen to free a teammate. Devendorf sets the screen and immediately he's the guy that's open and makes a strong move, finishes with his left hand. That's good basketball. Swapshire out. Clark back in for the Cardinals. Harris to inbound it. He finds Devendorf. 
really have to watch them coming from behind to tip that ball away. Devendorf coast to coast, can't finish, rebound Williams. They want to get you going faster than you're used to. And when you're going at full speed, they will make you make a mistake. And he's had some big moments, knocking down shots, great defense in this tournament. Clark tries to thread the needle, bounce pass, still loose. And a timeout called by Andy Routen. Lying on the deck. Or was it Anjanat? Anjanat. Anjanat down on the floor to secure possession for the Orange. And it is the day that we have all been waiting for. Selection Sunday. First at 6 Eastern, catch Sports Center for wall to wall coverage of the brackets. Then at 7 Eastern, our experts, including the man sitting to my right, will break it all down with two hours of ESPNU bracketology. Who's in, who's out, who's a one seed, who's not. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Foul on McGee. For what it's worth, uh, but just a couple of hours ago, Joe Lenardi, our bracketologist, took Connecticut off the one line and put them on the two line and moved Memphis up to a number one seed. Your thoughts? Well, Joey Brackets is hardly ever wrong, and he is predicting what the committee will do. I think if the committee does that, they're making a major mistake. Not that Memphis isn't an outstanding team, but Connecticut, even without Jerome Dyson, I mean, the only losses they've suffered are to Pittsburgh, and somebody had to go six overtimes in a slugfest to beat them. And look what it took to beat Connecticut. Yet he, he had to go six overtimes to foul out Hashim to beat. Eric Devendorf with a tough shot. He's got eight. Syracuse back within two. And the pressure by Andre McGee on that last possession was impressive. That's going to wear on the Syracuse team after a while. Earl Clark with four. He's had some big games here. He had 24 Thursday against Providence, 17 last night against Villanova. Johnny Flynn inside, left hand no. And a held ball. It'll be Syracuse ball after the battle between Williams and Anjana. Earl Clark, when he catches the ball on the baseline or in the middle, he's a playmaker. And he catches looking for his offense right away. This young man has long arms, and he has a really good shooting stroke. Devendorf goes out now for Syracuse. He's played almost as much as Flynn has over the last three nights. Harris puts it on the floor and is fouled. It'll be Samardo Samuels is first. Johnny Flynn did something really smart against the full-court pressure of Louisville in the last possession. He passed ahead and then got it back. If he has to bring it up all game long against the likes of Preston Knowles and Andre McGee, well, that's going to wear him out a little bit faster. Anjanat lobs it inside. Anuaku. Anjanat has been the facilitator offensively for the Orange so far tonight. Anuaku is a space eater. And he is so, so strong, there is no way you're going to be able to root him out in low post position. 6'9", 275. Meanwhile, Andre McGee knocks down the three at the other end. The lead is five for the Cardinals. Flynn. Harris, three-point game. Great job by Syracuse to inbound the ball quickly before the Louisville press could get set up after that basket. Andre McGee gets as much out of his ability level as any player in the Big East. And I'm not sure there's a guard that works any harder on the defensive end. Lipitino says he's in the best shape of his life. He has lost weight. This season is senior season. And one of the most tenacious perimeter defenders in this league. And a foul nullifies the basket and takes us to a timeout. It is Louisville 25, Syracuse 22. We've got a good one going here for the Big East Championship game. A couple of nights ago, he is one minute away from tying, two from breaking. The record for most minutes in one Big East tournament those of you, all of you who had Daryl Watkins as the answer for the man who's played the most minutes, <laughs> say aye. Just as I suspected. Daryl Watkins played 157. There was an overtime game back in 06. So 157 of 165 minutes. Somehow Watkins played more minutes than Terry McNamara did back in 2006. And look how that zone extends. And Syracuse took advantage of it by getting it to the middle and then looking down into Anawaku, but a great play by Terrence Williams. Terry McNamara 
And uh, his image being shown up on the scoreboard here at MSG simultaneous, simultaneously with what you're seeing at home. And you can hear the ovation. It is a very pro Syracuse crowd, as you can hear once again. Andy Routon says Tiger. Uh, just coming off a little baseline screen into the corner. And we have talked about it over and over, but it is still just as impressive how he sets his feet so quickly. Jerry Smith on the perimeter. He turns it over. Routens and Anjanat were in there defending. Routens pulls up again. And over the backboard to Louisville. Here comes Devendorf back into the game. Jim Beheim, not his first rodeo. He took out Flynn a minute before one media timeout to get him about four or five minutes of rest, but only missing one or two minutes of game time. And he just did the same thing with Eric Devendorf. Well, there may be some people who don't think that shot by Andy Routens was a good one. I'm not one of those people. I think that was a great shot. Because it, it's Andy Routens and the way he shot the ball this week. Not only the way he can shoot the ball, but in transition, to have that kind of opportunistic free where you're stepping into your shot like that, and you can work the ball around the perimeter of that zone all you want to and not get a look that good. Will Clark for three. And the foul is going to go on Anjan out of Syracuse. Well, Louisville has been taking an awful lot of jump shots. And they cannot forget about the baseline of this 2-3 zone. If you throw the ball down along the baseline, you're not only going to flatten out this defense, you're going to put Syracuse in a position to foul. Only Notre Dame attempted more threes this season among Big East teams than Louisville. And the Syracuse zone lends itself to other teams taking a ton of threes. Louisville attempted 31 in their whatever Syracuse during the regular season. They've already attempted 11 here tonight. Exactly half of their field goal attempts have been threes. Well, they're going to have to take some jump shots. They can't eschew it all together, but they want to try to get the ball along the base. There it is, along the baseline. Clark pressured by Anjanat. It'll be another three and a deep one from Preston Knowles, who during the season has shot the ball from beyond the arc at a clip of 45%. But just the act of getting that ball along the baseline, collapsing that defense, having the ball inside to play inside out makes that shot that much better. You're stepping into it, and the defense is totally flattened out. Okay, how about Knowles? Ten points total the last two games, 12 already tonight. Tough shot for Johnny Flynn. What has he done in this tournament that hasn't been tough? That kid has the heart of a lion. Played almost every minute last season in conference play. And his minutes down a little bit this year because they're a little bit deeper. But when called upon, he has been extraordinary here in this tournament. Williams off to Clark. Return feed Williams. Kick to Sosa, into Samuels, back to Knowles for three. Moved it beautifully, but missed the shot. Devendorf leaking out, got it. Andy Routens with a 60-foot assist. Whenever a shot goes up, Eric Devendorf will not rebound. He is going the other way. And his teammates know it. They know to get that outlet out as quickly as they can. Listen to the Syracuse fans. Trying to put together as remarkable a run, maybe more remarkable, than the four wins in four days three years ago. Williams for three. And Louisville taking nothing but three-pointers right now. Terrence Williams cannot buy a jumper. He needs to get something easy. Devendorf from the corner. Timeout, Louisville. Eric Devendorf stepped forward with 23 points against West Virginia. The pass to Routens. He draws Terrence Williams out. That leaves Devendorf wide open. And look how he leaks out after that shot. He is behind the defense, and his teammates know it. Eric Devendorf is a great offensive player. A little bit of a light rebounder, but you know what? You get two points out of it. 13 points already tonight for Eric Devendorf. He's had games of 19, 22, and 23 already in this tournament. And 13 hit a night. And 
By the end of tonight, either Devendorf or Andy Routens probably will hold the tournament record for most threes made in a Big East championship. And you let a shooter score like Devendorf see the ball go through the net as often as he's seen it go through the net tonight. He's going to be awfully hard to stop the rest of this game. The minutes played record now officially belongs to Johnny Flynn. A whole bunch of records are going to be broken tonight. If you're in the, the Louisville huddle, what do you think the message was from Rick Pitino after that last season? They need to get something in the middle, get the ball in the middle, and play inside out. It's okay to get a jump shot, but they've got to work to get a good shot in the middle of this off, uh, this defense and then put their press on. Knowles off to Clark. Bothered by Anjan on and he missed the shot. Well, they did everything perfectly off the penetration by Knowles and just didn't finish the play. And as a result, no press. Did Knowles try to fight around the screen from Anjan and he fouled Flynn. The under four timeout is upon us here in New York. A four-point lead for Syracuse. When we come back, Doris Burke with the star of the 2006 title run for the Orange. Standing by with our Doris Burke. Yeah, Dan, this is a guy who knows a thing or two about trying to prepare for a fourth game in four days. Give us some sense of what the Syracuse Orange are feeling physically and mentally. Well, I can't imagine what a guy like Johnny Flynn is feeling right now. Uh, playing 67 out of 70 minutes in a game. and. I think at this point they're just going on adrenaline. You know, the, the Big East tournament is such a great event, and, and you know, uh, to be on the, the you know the, the bright stage with the you know the brightest lights is uh, what it's all about. Well, to that end, there's been a lot of conversation about how important the NCAA tournament is from a player's perspective. How important is winning a Big East championship? Well, I think all tournament championships are are pretty important. You know, they're important for teams that uh, maybe their body of work hasn't been so good during the season, and you know, coming into the tournament like this, you need you need to do a little bit more work, but. Uh, you know, it's it, it's so fun because you have a last chance to face some of the teams that, you, you know, maybe, maybe got the best of you during the season. Congratulations, guys. He played through a stress fracture in that remarkable run. He doesn't want to hear anything about these guys being tired. Guys. <laughs> All right, Doris. Thank you. Knowles in this. And he makes a great point, Jane. You played in, obviously, four ACC tournaments. Those bragging rights. These guys have been playing against each other for four years, and in many cases, for years before they even got to college. Yeah, there's no question that while everybody's eyes are on the NCAA tournament right now, for these players, the Big East Championship is what they want. And for Louisville, and I think this is really important, you know, people have, have tried to take away a little bit from their Big East regular season championship saying, you know what, they didn't have to go on the road and face UConn at UConn. They didn't have to play Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh. They won the league. If they win the tournament, that's going to be an unbelievable statement about the kind of season that the Louisville has had. And they're playing with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder because Connecticut and Pittsburgh have gotten more accolades over the course of most of the season than the Cardinals have. You know, the Jerry McNamara Syracuse team, they needed to, to make some noise in this tournament just to get into the NCAA tournament three years ago. For Pittsburgh last year, when they won 4-4. Four four. For Syracuse this year, that's not the case. But we can still see, all you have to do is watch the game a couple of nights ago to see how much it matters and, and how hard these players have worked. The pride of being a champion is still the motivating factor for all these players. Play Louisville has got to start doing a better job on the offensive end. One being stronger with the ball and showing a little bit better judgment. Tonight into Jackson. Spitting on Jennings who's a good shot blocker. Jackson finds it. Misses it. Anjanon has it in traffic. And he rounds the three. And Williams skies above the rim for the rebound. Anjanon worked so hard on that possession and made a couple of very smart plays. And one thing Louisville hasn't been able to accomplish as well in this game as they did in the first one is offensive rebound. Part of it's because of the jump shots, but in the first meeting they had 21 offensive rebounds. Thus far in this game, they've got five, but it's led to 11 points. They need to continue to pound the offensive glass. And Jay, they are not getting the ball right there where Williams has it now. They have not been able to do that much the last few possessions. They do it this time, and Williams scores. At the other end, Hodgenov scores and hits the floor incredibly hard as he wound up up on top. I think it was of Terrence Williams and then crashed down to the court. Was it Jennings underneath him? A completely inadvertent play. And great concern here with the Garden right now for the well-being of Christoph Anjanat. He landed right on his back up near his shoulder level. And a 
appears he is talking to the medical staff of Syracuse, which is a great sign. But you will not see a scarier moment in a basketball game than what he just went through. Syracuse fans begin to chant his name here in New York. Let's give you another look. And it was Jennings. Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, he hung on to the rim, but just couldn't stay hung on to it. And how much more toughness can this Syracuse team show? One more look and listen at a, a scary play that fortunately does not seem to have injured Anjana too seriously. Anjana has a free throw coming. He is out of the game right now, so Paul Harris has come in to take the free throw for him. As they continue to tend to Anjana and make sure he's all right. Syracuse by five. And Syracuse did such a good job of running the floor. And getting down quickly to score. They've been very opportunistic, as Doris Burke said earlier. Really done a good job of picking their spots, trying to beat this Louisville defense down the floor. They had a chippy physical win over Seton Hall on Wednesday. The historic six-overtime win over Connecticut on Thursday. Needed overtime last night to beat West Virginia. Now they come in here tonight playing the number one team in the conference. A team that sends relentless pressure at you for 40 minutes. And Syracuse has the lead here late in the first half. Each team with five team fouls. Just over a minute to go in the half. You can see that Syracuse trying to shade Terrence Williams in the middle. Great shot fake. This is the floater. Steals it away from Onowaku. Williams gets it back. Hit in and out on the three. Boy, he cannot buy one from the perimeter here this week. No team in college basketball is better at reaching from behind to get steals than Louisville. Williams has another one. This is where he's tough. Hits it on the floor, draws the foul. A non-shooting foul. A reminder that tomorrow afternoon at 1 Eastern, Championship Week continues on ESPN. The Florida State Seminoles, who knocked off North Carolina today, take on Duke in the ACC Championship game. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. The ACC Championship subject to blackout in ACC markets. Big picture, North Carolina. No Ty Lawson. Will he be ready to go from NCAA tournament time? Johnny Flynn misses the layup. Syracuse ball. Get an update on Anjanat now. Here's Doris. Sports Information Director Pete Moore told me that Christoph Anjanat is fine, and when Coach Beheim sees fit to put him back in, he is available to play, guys. Well, very good news, not just from a basketball perspective, from an overall health and well-being perspective for Anjanat after that awfully scary play. Uh, they need him back in there. He brought a level of toughness, getting loose balls, making smart plays, and he's a good passer. A three second difference between the game clock and shot clock. Routens will take it and make it. There is just a connection between Andy Routens, Eric Devendorf, and Johnny Flynn. And they pass the ball to each other and they are ready when it arrives. Tough shot by McGee. And Syracuse ball with just under a second to go. The Orange Jay are on a 13-2 run and have their largest lead of the night. Syracuse does not look tired to me. That was an energetic first half by the Orange. And the pro Syracuse crowd is on its feet. Anjanat is okay. The Orange have the lead. The run to end the half. And they're up 38-30 to 30 at the break on the regular season champion Louisville Cardinals. 20 minutes perhaps separating the Orange from a Big East championship. Time to join Reese Davis in the studio now for the Cisco Halftime Reports. They did settle for a lot of jump shots. They were 4 of 15 from 3, shooting only 39% in that first half. And that meant they couldn't get into their press. They need to run more efficient offense so that they can press. But when Louisville has pressed, it's been Syracuse that's been opportunistic in breaking that pressure to score. 
53% shooting in the first half for Syracuse. Five of ten from three. They only turned it over seven times. Let's take a look now at our first half stats brought to you by Guinness. There's some of the numbers that Jay was talking about. 13 assists on 16 baskets for Syracuse. Passing the ball beautifully. They even got Flynn a couple of minutes of rest. They got Devendorf a couple of minutes of rest. Christoph Anjanat appears to be okay. Came out as Doris mentioned near the end of the first half. He's in the layup line and we do expect to see Anjanat in off the bench again for the Orange. He had a terrific first half. There's an immediate foul on Syracuse as we check in with Doris. The entirety of the Louisville halftime centered on defense and rebounding. When they found themselves trailing last night against Villanova, Rick Pitino wrote on the board, how special do you want to be? Pay the price. A similar message to his gentlemen tonight. On the Syracuse side, guys, they couldn't have been more pleased. After giving up some early points off turnovers by not handling Louisville's pressure, they felt like they settled down. Clearly, Coach Bayheim thrilled with Devendorf keeping them in the game early. He said, listen, they reminded their guys Louisville went on that 14-2 run and never looked back against Nova. He said, let's not settle down, guys. Continue to handle the pressure and execute. Well, Jay, as we sat here at the table during halftime, maybe you can talk about a couple of things we saw from the Syracuse group. This is not a tightly wound bunch right No, they are, they are a very loose group. You had players coming over to say things to us. I mean, they are having fun out there. And the Syracuse alums that are in the crowd are talking to the players. Derek Coleman's here, and he took Rick Jackson aside and gave him a lesson in post play at halftime. Right out on the court as they're running layups. Paul Harris now with five points, and the Orange lead is up to nine. Remember against Villanova after halftime, this Louisville team came out, out much more focused offensively, getting the ball into the middle of the floor and attacking. Now they're attacking off the dribble. Clark inside to Samuels. Nicely done. On the first possession, it was Terrence Williams attacking off the bounce, then Clark. And now Williams comes up with a turnover. Clark the extra pass. Andre McGee kept alive by Williams. Back-to-back -back baskets for Louisville. And when they score, they can press. How special do you want to be? Well, they look pretty special when they get in that press. Syracuse has been a pay in the price, playing extra minutes, extra overtimes all week long. Louisville trying to show that they can rival the toughness and the ability to pay the price of the orange. Anuaku hits the deck. Samuels hits the deck. And one of the best ways to attack a zone is with dribble penetration. Move the ball from side to side and then attack off the bounce. Terrence yeah, Williams the best equipped to do that for Louisville. Samuels has it blocked from behind. Flynn, one on one with Williams and a foul. Johnny Flynn is a very smart player in transition after the pass ahead and Syracuse has done a great job of pass advance he just seeks out the body of the defender he knows he's going to get fouled and goes right into the defender's body Johnny Flynn at the line for Syracuse Eric Devendorf with a question for one of the officials, Ed Corbett. Well, he's asking. Jim Burr's down with Terrence Williams at the other end of the court. I think Devendorf was asking uh, Ed Corbett about pinning the ball on the right. backboard. He thought that's supposed to be goaltending. Now Flynn ready to shoot the free throws. And more good news for Syracuse. We saw him a moment ago with the scores table. Christoph Anjanat is okay. And back into the game after that terrifying fall near the end of the first half. And even that's Earl Clark, a Louisville player standing right beside the play who had to turn his head away, could hardly look as Anjanat hit the court. Anjanat had a great first half. Made plays, passed the ball, had three assists, three rebounds, a couple of buckets. Jay, you talked about it in the first half. The wings on the bottom of the 2-3 zone come up very high for Syracuse. Jerry Smith gets an open three and knocks it down. How can Louisville try to exploit the wings coming up high in the Syracuse zone? I still think they need to get the ball along the baseline. The baseline is going to be a place where they can really attack, flatten out that zone, and then kick it out to open shooters. And Jerry Smith has done a really good job with his shot fake. We saw it against Villanova. He wound up getting some shots here. The shot fake on the closeout. Johnny Flynn flies by, and you've got a wide open shot in rhythm. That's very well done by Jerry Smith. The ball movement by Syracuse. Flynn inside, muscles it up, doesn't get the bounce. Rebound Clark. There was some contact out front with Flynn 
and McGee, but it wasn't called. Rounds closes out on Smith in a hurry. Williams inside, cross court look, McGee, and we are tied at the Garden. Dribble penetration has been hurting Syracuse, and Louisville is continuing to go to it. When they put the ball on the deck and make one hard dribble into the teeth of that defense, they are getting something good. Louisville hoping to wear Syracuse down over the course of the night with their pressure and knowing how many minutes the Orange have played over the last three nights. And now a turnover. Anjana turned his back on the pass. Didn't realize it was coming to him. Louisville's got it again. Terrific job by Samardo Samuels to deny, and Anjana just turning to try to go the other way. It's like when you cut back, cut back door. Once you make your cut, you've got to continue with it. Timeout, Jim Beheim. Couple of threes for Louisville. And we've got our Syracuse. Let's see who's been heating up. Brought to you by DiGiorno. It's the Louisville Cardinals, Jay, who have been heating up from beyond the arc here in the second half. Well, they've been knocking down their open shots in large measure because they've been taking much better shots off of dribble penetration. They are getting some open looks. That great shot fake by Jerry Smith that led to a wide open three. And when they score, they get into that press. And that press is going to have a cumulative effect. It is going to wear Syracuse down, get into their legs, force some turnover. Smith, another shot fake, bounce pass inside. Samuels using the rim to shield off the defender, gives the Cardinals the lead. But just that shot fake by Smith set everything up. Syracuse has got to do a better job of staying disciplined defensively and staying down on those fakes. A 12 to 1 run, as you can see, for Louisville. It's been a game of runs. Syracuse had the first six points. Louisville got the next 11 tonight. Jackson from Anjanot. How many times have we seen that tonight? Well, Anjanot is so cool when he gets the ball in the middle of that zone. So many guys get really panicked sometimes when they get into the middle. And he is very poised, and that help from Derek Coleman seems to have worked for Rick Jackson. Derek Coleman, one of a number of former Syracuse stars in attendance here tonight. Smith slapped it away, and Louisville's got the ball again. They get so many deflections. They've got active hands, and you've got to be strong with the ball. He got bumped a little bit. That doesn't mean you get to cough it up. He's looking to penetrate, and it'll be a held ball. Good reach in there by Flynn. It'll be Syracuse ball. Syracuse. Well, this is at halftime, what Jay was speaking of earlier. Right during layup line, Derek Coleman's going over and saying hi to Rick Jackson. But after a while, I mean, now he's working with him on post moves. I guess it worked. It certainly did work. He was ready, had his hands ready when the ball got there. And, and Derek was a pretty darn good post player himself. As a freshman, grabbed 19 rebounds in the NCAA championship game against Indiana. Well, under Jim Beheim, no program in the Big East has been to the championship game of this tournament more than Syracuse. This is the 14th time that Syracuse has played in the championship game. They have won five previous Big East championships. This is the first time Louisville's played in this game, just their fourth year in the Big East Conference. Another steal, this time by McGee. A good look for Smith. And a timeout on the floor. The Big East Tournament Championship is on the line here tonight at the Garden. It's tied at 43. Competitive game here in an alumni game. I like the Orange. Look at the talent that they have assembled here tonight. Pearl Washington, one of the most entertaining players to ever play in the Big East. Leo Routens, Andy's dad, and a great player in his own right for a couple of years in the early 80s. Garrett Coleman, Billy Owen sitting side by side. That's Raphael Addison sitting right behind him. Some of the great players who have led Syracuse to five Big East Tournament titles, not to mention this being their 14th time in the Big East Championship game in the 30-year history of this conference. You know, I was a teammate of Leo Routens in Italy a, on a professional team. But before we played our first game together, he came to me and said, I'm a great point guard. I'm a great passer. If you get open, I will get you the ball. And the first game we played, he shot it every time he touched it, scored 40 <laughs> points. And I said, what happened to this great passer stuff? And he said, well, part of green being a great point guard is knowing the limitations of your teammates. Ouch. <laughs> Another lazy pass. Terrence Williams is fouled. The orange shade, you talked about it before the break. They continue to, to lob balloon balls just up over the middle of this defense, and that's got no shot against Louis. Well, first it was Andy Rounds throwing a, a lame duck pass. Then it was Johnny Flynn stuck in a trap along the sideline. You've got to keep the ball off the sideline where they can trap and use that sideline as a third defender. But if you float a pass 
It's gone. It will go the other way, and it's essentially an assist for Louisville. Third foul on Devendorf. Harris in for Anjanon. Terrence Williams has five steals tonight. He has had trouble scoring in this tournament, but he's doing all of the other things that have made him a first-team All-Big East performer this year. He's a great all-around player. Harris out ahead of the defense, blocked by Samuels. Harris kind of double clutch there. He's got to go stronger. He's a strong kid and a great athlete. He has to go stronger. And now the foul on Andy Routen. The tide turning in the last few moments in Louisville's favor. Uh, Louisville is a great defensive team. Not a good one, a great one. I think it's Louisville and Memphis as the two best defensive teams I've seen all year long. J3 on Devendorf, three on Routens. Very limited depth for Syracuse. Well, they just have to be smart. Samuels driving on Jackson. Good move by the freshman. Using his strength. And Jackson was sizing him up for a shot block. They used that strength and went over the rim. Devendorf misses the three. Clark cannot control it. It'll be Syracuse ball. Well, one thing, you always have to be careful that you don't travel when you get the ball down under the basket and you're shot faking. Yeah, he walked. Shuffled those feet. Routens wide open on the wing. On a walk to the offensive rebound. Routens will get a second opportunity. And maybe a third. Syracuse has got it again. It'll be Devendorf. And another offensive rebound. To the fourth opportunity of this possession now for Syracuse. They have missed three threes. That's the best time to shoot a three is after an offensive board. Syracuse had three of them off offensive rebounds in one possession. Being defended by Clark right now. Routens wide open in the corner. And now Louisville comes up with it. The Orange with four looks from beyond the arc. Williams. Clark. And a foul on Anawaku. Attacking that baseline. You start wondering about fatigue at this late stage in the game, especially with all the minutes that Syracuse has played. Welcome to the title game here at the Big East Championship at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Doris Burke, the number one seed, Louisville, the number six seed, Syracuse, who beat UConn in six overtimes two nights ago, who needed overtime last night to beat West Virginia. It has been a back and forth game. Syracuse had a double digit lead for a while. Well, the Cardinals have played much better here in the second half. What has been the difference since the break, Jay, for Louisville? Well, it's been their defense. But the biggest part of it, I think, has been the way they've attacked the Syracuse zone. They attacked it through dribble penetration. Instead of just settling for jump shots, they were putting the ball on the floor, collapsing that defense. And when they score, like they just did off these free throws, they can get into that press. And you can really wear a team down once you press and press and press. How about a 17-3 run for Louisville? The depth of Louisville, the style of Louisville, the minutes of Syracuse. All perhaps working against the Orange right now as Terrence Williams has another steal. And an assist on the three by Clark. Timeout, Syracuse. Syracuse has floated passes in this second half. There have been arc on these passes, and that is allowing Louisville, an aggressive defensive team, to shoot the gap and take it the other way. That is a floated pass. It was not a straight line pass or a hard pass. And the dribble penetration in transition, spotting up in the corner, Earl Clark. And Louisville has dominated this second half with their defense. Tomorrow on ESPN, the day that you've been waiting for, Selection Sunday at 6 Eastern to catch Sports Center for wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the brackets. And at 7 Eastern, our experts, including Jay, will break it all down over two hours of ESPNU Bracketology. Find out who's in, whose bubble has burst, and I predict that at one point or another, constantly from 10 a.m. until midnight, somewhere on the ESPN platforms, if you're looking for Jay Billis, you'll find him. It's going to be a big day for you tomorrow. Well, it's a big day for college basketball, and there have been a lot of people sitting on pins and needles wondering if they're going to get in. Is there a team in the crosshairs as far as you're concerned right now, that, that ultimate 65th or 66th team? I think it's St. Mary's. Onowaku gathers and scores. Samuel's trying to take the charge. And we wonder a little bit, Dan, about the mental fatigue that may be setting in 
for Syracuse. And you haven't seen them float passes at all in this Big East championship. And in this second half, they floated quite a few. Williams for three. The lead is nine. And Williams has really been struggling from the field in this Big East championship. Before that shot, he had not been hitting anybody. Devendorf inside, scoops it up and in. Eric Devendorf. Eric Devendorf with 15 now to lead the orange. These guards for Louisville are really active and strong. Another three. Williams using all of the rim on that one. Before those last two, he was four of 22 from the field in this Big East championship. He's got as many points tonight, Jay, as he had in the last two games combined. Well, he's feeling it now, and they got into it from the defensive end. Paul Harris in and out. Louisville has been a good second-half team because of their pressure and their depth wearing teams down. Good position by Samuels, and Harris had to come over and commit the foul. And Louisville's passing has really improved in the second half. Much more crisp, getting the ball into the right spots, moving it from side to side, and that was a shot taken with great confidence by Terrence Williams. I think he's going to be a good shooter as he gets to the next level and has more of an opportunity to really work on that shot and work on his mechanics. I think he's going to complete his game by becoming a good shooter. Subs for both teams, and look who's coming in for Syracuse. And again, we're 21 seconds away from a potential media timeout. Justin Thomas, the walk-on, who, because so many guys had fouled out, played seven minutes in the six-overtime game on Thursday night. A young man who had only played about 20 minutes the whole season. Well, uh, who will ever forget the image of him coming in, everybody being completely exhausted, and Thomas playing at the top of that 2-3 zone, doing jumping jacks, active, energetic, and he was the only one on the floor with any energy. And again, Jim Beheim just trying to steal a little rest in and around the media timeout for Johnny Flynn here and there, Eric Devendorf here and there. They ought to go after Thomas every time he catches it. Knowles is on him right now. Nice feed inside to Harris. Good help defensively. And it's going to be Syracuse ball, Jim Burr says. 12.03 to go. An 11-point lead for Louisville. Johnny Flynn getting a brief breather. Paul Harris has to go stronger to the basket. Well, he's had some opportunities to score inside. On one, he double clutch. But he's either got to score or get fouled when he gets the ball along the baseline. Anjanat back in. Thomas goes to the bench. So he got 18 seconds there. This Louisville pressure, it, just, it catches up with you. And it is just relentless. being hounded by both Knowles and Swapshire. Puts it on the floor and draws the foul on Jennings. He is working as hard as anybody in this game here tonight. But Louisville, with a great second half, they have turned a deficit into a lead. Is it all finally weighing on the orange? Thanks. Thanks going to get away in a minute. An 11-point lead for Louisville over Syracuse after the Orange had an 8-point lead at the half. Louisville, are they wearing Syracuse down? Is Syracuse just not making good decisions? Jay, what have you seen? Well, this second half, Syracuse has taken the ball into bad spots, and they've made weak passes, getting trapped on the sideline. Louisville able to take it the other way. Floating passes. Seven turnovers in the first 20 minutes for Syracuse. Now seven turnovers in the first eight minutes of the second half. And Louisville has been magnificent with their defense. They are just relentless coming at you and at you and at you. They're, they can wear you out when you're fresh, let alone when you're tired. You can see the, the huge numbers of minutes that the Syracuse players have played. Basically, with the six overtimes on Thursday and another one last night, they've basically played an extra game's worth of minutes. There's been an extra 35 minutes of action for the Orange. Plus, this is their fourth game in a four nights. Louis, it's Louisville's third in three nights. So really, the Syracuse players are working, having played about two extra games worth of minutes than the Cardinals coming into this and well, they played the late game as well right and it's awfully yeah. difficult to get sleep after you play in a late game because you are still wired and jazzed from the game there's no way that any Syracuse player could have gotten any sleep after Thursday night six overtime throw and no way and on top of all that all things being equal it was pretty good I mean they won this league and, and this, I don't think we want to lie that 
tired. Were Syracuse not tired, they would be winning this game. We have no idea how much that's affecting them right now, but Louisville has proven themselves to be a terrific team all season long, the regular season champions of this league, and they beat Syracuse at Syracuse during the regular season. Louisville's not only pretty good, they're better. I mean, Louisville's the better team. Now, that doesn't mean that Syracuse can't win, but Syracuse's story has been compelling. But I'll tell you what, this Louisville team is Final Four and National Championship good. Williams rips down the rebound. Terrence Williams is stuffing the stat sheet tonight. Let's bring in Doris Burke. Well, Dan, in fact, Terrence Williams showing me that his team packed a little bit of a chip on their shoulder when they departed Louisville. They felt like all the conversation coming to this tournament was about Pittsburgh and Connecticut, despite the fact that they had to go on the road in the regular season finale to Morgantown and beat a very tough West Virginia team. He said, listen, you have to earn respect. If you don't earn it, you've got to go take it. He said, we intend to win a championship for Coach Pacino. It would be a first. This means a ton to these Louisville players, guys. You know, and Doris, that's a great point because, you know, the, the respect they are earning right now has been from their play from the Big East until now. When the Big East play started, because uh, before the conference play started, they did not perform at the highest level. I mean, they lost to Western Kentucky. They got beat by Minnesota. They lost at home to UNLV when UNLV didn't have their leading scorer, Wink Adams. This Louisville team reminds me a little bit of teams that Denny Crum had in the early 80s. Teams that would play a really difficult non-conference schedule. They'd get off to a little bit of what you could call a slow start, but they would learn a lot about themselves, and they would get better and better, and by the end of the year, they were tough as nails, and they might have a few losses, but they were ready to compete for a championship by the end of the year. And 24 hours from now, they might be known as a team that not only won the regular season title of this league, also the tournament title, and also perhaps a number one seed. It would seem more and more with some of the other things that have happened this week that a Louisville win tonight would secure them a number one seed. We'll all find out tomorrow on Selection Sunday. Well, I think they should be a number one seed whether they win this game or not. Because I think Louisville has proven to be one of the four best teams in the country based upon their entire body of work. You have three Big East teams still among the top four? I do. I, I don't think that there's any way that you could reasonably take UConn off that top seed line. With what UConn has done all season long, and they lost twice to Pittsburgh. And I, I mean, I would invite anyone to play Pittsburgh the way UConn did and see if they can get through those two games without losing as well. Memphis would be a two in your, in, in your yes. mind? Yep. Memphis would be a two, Michigan State as well. On Janata miss. And what about the Duke's Florida State game today? How does that feel? Yeah. I, think, I think Duke, at best, is a two seed. I don't see them as a one seed. A foul by Rick Jackson. And the gauntlet that you have to run in the ACC is really impressive. I just think the Big East was a better league this year. And I think that Louisville has proven, not only through the paper, but also through watching this team play and evaluating them from a basketball perspective, this is one of the four best teams in America. They beat Providence in their first game in a 1-8 game here. Then they beat Villanova last night in the semifinal. A very good team that Jay Wright has. We took them apart in the second half. And Scotty Reynolds only had two points in that entire game. Samuels. There's that baseline we talked about. Samuels just hiding along the baseline. The dribble penetration has really been effective against Syracuse. Johnny Flynn coast to coast. And you can tell Johnny Flynn just doesn't have the same bounce in his staff tonight that he had last night. And it's amazing the high level at which he has performed given what he's been through in this tournament. Past the midway point of the second half. Louisville, which was down eight at halftime, up nine right now, and seeking its first Big East tournament title. A steal, though, by Dievendorf. He's got Flynn. He'll take it himself. Flynn can't gather it in for the follow, and the Orange miss a big opportunity. That's got to be deflating for Syracuse. Sosa draws the foul at the other end. Evendorf has got a very good left hand. And he took that ball and kept it in his left hand. And the defense just swiped at it. Jerry Smith really challenging and forcing that miss. And that's one that Johnny Flynn needed to finish. I mean, that was a pretty easy tip opportunity. And it just fell through his hands. 
And there's Sosa at the line for Louisville, a young man who a couple of months ago Rick Pitino called him and he said, I think you should transfer. And then he stuck the knife in a little bit more. He said, I think you should transfer to a school where they don't value defense. And he really shook the foundation of Edgar Sosa. Sosa came back to him the next day and he said, I want to stay here, coach. I don't want to go. He had a game-winning shot against Kentucky a few days later. And that pep talk, for lack of a better term, that conversation they had, it may have turned Sosa and Louisville's season around to a certain extent. Well, he challenged Sosa with that invitation to transfer. I don't think it was deep down a very serious offer. But one thing that Rick Pitino has really done, he's stuck with Edgar Sosa. I mean, in the UNLV game where Sosa did not have a good first half, Pitino started him in the second half. I mean, he, Edgar Sosa's a really good kid. And Rick Pitino has stuck with him, and he's been rewarded for it. That was a, he was the hero of the Kentucky game. Pitino, of course, a guy who was born here in New York, grew up just about a dozen blocks away, and says this is the biggest collegiate game he has ever coached in this building. He coached the Knicks to a series win of the playoffs over the Phillies and then coached against the Celtics in the NBA playoffs. But he still loves coming back here. Obviously, a ton of family and friends in New York and says collegiately, this is the biggest game he has ever coached in this building. He signed his national letter of intent with UMass here in this building. How good the story is that? After a UMass game, they brought him out of the court and signed it right then and there. Jackson does not get the bounce. So the lead for Louisville is 10. Under eight minutes to go here in the second half. The Cardinals looking to win the Big East title. Syracuse, 7-58 to go. A tremendous second half for the Cardinals. One Hall of Fame coach in Jim Beheim. Another one in Rick Pacino, who very likely will wind up there. At the end of his tenure, two of the giants of their profession. And for a couple of years, way back when, one of Jim Beheim's assistants at Syracuse was Rick Pitino. But there's a little bit more to that story. Let's bring in Doris Burke. Well, most grooms on their first night of being married, guys, think only about their honeymoon. For Rick Pitino, so strong was his desire to get into coaching that he actually went and interviewed for the assistant coaching position at Syracuse under Jim Beheim. His marriage, no worse for the wear, guys, approaching 25 years and counting. They're doing all right. I think the best part of the story that uh, Rick Pitino relayed to us before the game said he only accepted the job so he could get away from Beheim, get back up to his bride. It was it was wedding night, and he said yes, well, just so he could move on. And then the next day, he packed his bags and went out to recruit yeah. Lewis Horn. The Hawaii trip had to wait. Arms and out of the rebound. And Clark called for the foul, bodying him right into the Syracuse bench. Oh, a timeout was called. Before the contact, Anjanat, as he was stumbling out of bounds, I guess, called a timeout. And now Jim Burr and Ed Corbett, they've got different calls. Jim Burr's got a foul. Ed Corbett's got a timeout. And it's going to be Ed Syracuse Corbett who rules the day. It will be a Syracuse timeout. Well, you've got to keep the ball off the sideline. And this Louisville team, they call the, the coffin corner. If you pick the ball up there, you are really in trouble. And Clark was just using his body to body him out of bounds. Tomorrow, the day that we have been waiting for for a while, Selection Sunday at 6 Eastern to catch Sports Center for wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the brackets. And at 7 Eastern, our experts will break it all down with two hours of ESPNU bracketology. Find out who's in, whose bubble has burst. Also, prediction on who is headed to the Final Four. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. ESPNU bracketology presented by Staples at 7, right here on ESPN. Yeah. I think Joe Lenardi has to take things to the next level. You know, he went 65 for 65 last year. <laughs> yeah. I think he needs to pick the NIT field Sunday as oh, wow. well. <laughs> I, want, I want to know all 65, yeah. and then I want to know the 32 in the NIT. That will really impress me. That's so. Now, how about some of the losses by top teams? The teams, many of whom were in the mix for a one or two seed, many of whom are still in the mix for a one or two seed, but look at some of the upsets in the conference tournaments this week. In uh, 2005, North Carolina won the national championship. They lost in the semifinal of the ACC tournament. Clark with a block. It'll be Syracuse ball. And, and that's one of the arguments about something like Syracuse is going through this week as badly as they want to win this. Is this something that could hurt them in the NCAA tournament having to play so many games in so many minutes on so many nights. I'd rather hang a banner than take the risk. Jerry Smith injured behind the play for Louisville. May have rolled his left ankle. He got tangled up with Rick Jackson behind the play. Knowles will replace him.
34 and white. Yeah, Jackson wow. just fell on that ankle. It could have been a lot worse. Anjanad spins by Clark and is fouled. The last time Christoph Anjanad had a run out, he wound up on his back. This time, no hesitation, no fear. Just takes it to the rim. The nice spin move and used to the left hand and gets fouled and completes the play. Cannot convert on the free throw. Anjanad, who... It looked like it suffered a potentially serious injury at the end of the first half on a, a scary fall after he dunked it, it was fouled, it was all right, came back early in the second half and still making plays. Brings down the rebound off the Williams miss. That wasn't a good shot. He needed to pass the ball into the corner, flatten out the defense. He could have gotten that shot any time, even though he's hit his last two. Win. Routens. Devendorf. Jackson. And he missed it, Chippy. Boy, a beautiful sequence of passes for the Orange. But again, they come up empty. Just rushed it a little bit. And you can see a little bit of a deflated look in the eyes of Syracuse as they ran down the floor. They know they're hit. they are missing opportunities. And it was that one. It was the two-on-one. It was Flynn trying to follow the miss. Couldn't corral the rebound. They've had two or three golden opportunities that they've missed out on. Daniel setting a ball screen out top. Gets the feed from Sosa. Oh, that's pretty. Now you can screen his own. Little ball screen, pick and pop with Samuels. That was pretty. How about 14 tonight for the freshman? And meanwhile, the Orange have missed eight of their last nine shots. They're down by nine. Flynn. Mark the rebound. Sosa's going to slow it down. That did not look like the normal shot of Johnny Flynn. Not the same elevation. And he looks gassed. Absolutely gassed. In the first half, Syracuse shot 53%. They are shooting 27% here in the second half, and they haven't made a three in the second half. And Johnny Flynn just had his hands on his hips playing defense. You hardly ever see that. I mean, he's on fumes. Sosa gets it to go. A little bit of strength there from Sosa. Flynn got his hand in there on the ball. Sosa just forced it by him. Then the other way scoops it up in air. Well, his fumes are pretty powerful. <laughs> that was Johnny Flynn. I mean, remember the incredible total of minutes that the guys in orange have played. Nobody more than Johnny Flynn. And we haven't seen the smile as much. We're seeing a grimace now. Hands on hips again. No hands up in the zone right now for Syracuse. Verbal penetration has been good for Louisville. They need to keep it up. Sosa, deep three. Not the shot Rick Pitino wanted. He slaps his hands together in disgust. Just didn't need that shot. That shot's going to be there later on in the shot clock. You don't want to settle for jumpers, especially when you're playing against a tired team. Make them guard you. Edgar Sosa catching the ball and dribbling into a gap and completing that play with his left there, excuse me, his right hand, and then Johnny Flynn taking it the other way. As tired and exhausted as he is, he keeps pushing. What happens on the whistle, Jay? Sosa and Knowles go out. Here comes a fresh Andre McGee, a fresh Jerry Smith. No subs in the backcourt for Syracuse. Still Flynn, Diva North, and Routon. So what a rebound by Earl Clark. And Louisville just going to continue to bring the heat. And nobody brings the heat defensively in the backcourt better than Andre McGee. A 17-point swing here in the second half in favor of the Cardinals. The more passes Louisville makes, the more this Syracuse defense has to move. And right now, they don't want to move. McGee. The lead is double figures, and it's the largest lead of the night right now for Louisville. Well, that was a good shot because they made the defense move. Nobody came out to McGee. It was a shot in rhythm. Under four to play. On a walker. Battling with Samuels. Rebound Clark. Earl Clark has the potential to be a special player. Got nine points and eight rebounds tonight. 
This clock is the ally of the Cardinals right now. If you won't use that much of it, it misses the three. Rebound on Janai. He came back five times against Connecticut. In the first five overtimes, as Flynn knocks it down, timeout Jim Beheim. Did Syracuse somehow find the energy to muster one more comeback against Louisville here in the final 313? That is the final timeout for the Orange. Well, they need the rest, but in transition, Johnny Flynn was being guarded very well by Andre McGee. That screen by Arinze Anawaku was what, was what sprung him. Terrence Williams looking up, checking out the situation. 3.13 to go. A 10-point lead and the ball for the Louisville Cardinals trying to win not only the regular season title, which they did outright, but also the tournament championship here. It would be the first time in four years in the league for Louisville. Of course, great success in the Metro, Conference USA, and others, but this would be the first here in the Big East. Time now for tonight's Fresh Take, brought to you by Subway. And we're going to look at the field goal percentage half by half for the Syracuse Orange. Is this just the, the tired legs catching up to them? It's part of it, but it's also the heat being brought by Louisville in the second half. They've challenged more shots. They have not given up as many opportunities in transition. And the Louisville defense has been much better in the second half than it was in the first. And as Doris Burke reported, just after halftime when Rick Pitino wrote on the board, how special do you want to be? And they are within three minutes and 13 seconds of being the most special team in the Big East. I mean, in a year where the Big East was said to be as good as it has ever been and as tough as it has ever been, and Louisville has the chance to be the true Big East champions, regular season and tournament. That's extraordinary. Syracuse has to gamble and press now, trying to come up with some turnovers. Johnny Flynn, the foul, a timeout on the floor with 3.07 to go. The go at halftime of tonight's game, Mike Trangisi, the outgoing commissioner of the Beast, the man who ran this conference for the last 19 years. Uh, was honored again as he has been on a number of occasions this week. A, a terrifically talented, dedicated, and intelligent guy who's done some wonderful things for this league. Well, Dave Gavitt along with Mike Trangisi. Dave Gavitt was the visionary of this Big East Conference. And Mike Trangisi took it to the next level. I mean, he saw it through expansion and made all the right decisions. And I know how proud he is of what this conference has become, what it will continue to be. And how about how about this tournament, this championship, to be your last one? Yeah. Memorable, no matter who wins it, because of what Syracuse did to get this far. But with each passing possession, it looks like the Orange are running out of gas. And memorable because of how Louisville has dominated this with their defense. They forced 26 turnovers against Providence. For 23 turnovers against a guard-dominated Villanova team. And in the second half of this game, they've shut off Eric Diebendorf. I mean, he had 13 points in the first half. Diebendorf hasn't gotten a sniff in the second. There he is, driving on Williams, and gets the bounce. His first oh, deuce of the Diebendorf. second half. And Eric Diebendorf has now set the scoring record in a Big East championship, the most points in one tournament. He's moved ahead of Ben Gordon and Sam Young. Evendorf has had a terrific tournament. And Jim Beheim trusts him when he's got the ball to make the right decision. He he takes some shots that you, know, you might sometimes say no, 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 but he knocks him down. Smith the miss on a walk with a rebound. Syracuse with the ball, two and a half to go, down by nine. Sports Center is next here on ESPN to wrap up all the excitement from Championship Week. More games tomorrow, but it was a busy and eventful Saturday around the country. Louisville has to keep tabs on Andy Robbins. Johnny Flynn, not so fast. They have been counted out umpteen times already this week. Not willing to give it up just yet, down by seven. Louisville can give up twos. They just can't give up open threes. They cannot foul. 
Ooh, almost a travel. And a foul on Flynn. Boy, the Syracuse fans wanted a slip and a travel there on Jerry Smith. Well, one foot definitely did slip. Let's see if he kept his pivot foot with his other. Well, that's, that's a walk. The threaded logo in the middle of these right. floors. Right. Roy Williams of North Carolina has talked about it time and time again. They've changed it for the NCAA tournament. They will not have those stick logos. Double bonus, two free throws the rest of the way for Louisville. And Rick Pitino is going to use the timeout. timeout. That's a full timeout called by Louisville. Uh, Louisville with a chance not only to win this championship, but of course a team plenty capable of winning the national championship. Their last national championship, 1986. It was Louisville against Duke. Ever nervous Purvis. Freshman to Purvis Ellison, 25 points, 11 rebounds. Tournament MVP honors. Who's the guy with the short shorts playing defense on Purvis? They're wearing my ring. That game was won on an air ball. Jeff Hall shot an air ball, and Purvis Ellison grabbed it, and he had a tremendous game. I think he had 25 points in that game, but he wasn't the only player that they had. I mean, Milt Wagner was a great player, and Jeff Hall, and uh, Herb Crook, Billy Thompson. That was a great Louisville team coached by Denny Crum. Could this team get back to where no Louisville team has been since that team? Oh, there's no question they can. I mean, at the beginning of the year, I think most people, myself included, I picked them in my Final Four in October, uh, along with UConn and uh, North Carolina. And I had Michigan State at the beginning of the year. Michigan State has gone through some injuries. I still think they're capable. But this Louisville team, because of its defense, I mean, they have a, a fantastic chance to reach Detroit. You look at their team tonight, the scoring. Samuels has 15. Knowles has 12. Williams 11 three other players have nine they don't need one guy to score 20 points a night Earl Clark maybe can be that guy they've had seven different players lead them in scoring in a game this year they're not a great offensive team but when they pass the ball and move the ball from side to side and attack they can score and when they score and put on that press they're a special team their defense is, their defense is special and Andre McGee, who you just mentioned, is one of the one of the guys that makes it special. He and Preston Knowles have the unique ability to put pressure on the ball. And they can get up underneath you. They're really disruptive. Not many teams have guys like McGee and Knowles that specialize in defense. Trading points, basically. The Orange and Cardinals right now. Not good enough for Syracuse. As Devendorf knocks him down, Anjanat will check in for Anawaku. That's 20 points now for Devendorf. And we still have to watch when Syracuse gets the ball. Andy Routens and Eric Devendorf. Those are the major three-point threats. And Syracuse will force Louisville to make some free throws to lock this up. Tomorrow afternoon at 1 Eastern Championship Week continues on ESPN. It is Florida State and Duke. The ACC Championship game, the Seminoles of the ACC Championship game for the first time since they moved to that conference back in the early 90s. The ACC Championship, a part of Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. The game subject to blackout in ACC markets. And neither one of these teams particularly good free throw shooting teams. And efficiency stats, they are ranked 300 and 301st in free throw efficiency. Out of what, 343? 343. Yeah. All we have to do is think back to Memphis in the last year and how that can catch up to a team. Under two minutes to play, the deficit is eight. Able to not allow open threes. Not diving to try to keep it alive. He got raked from behind. They play on. No whistle. Oh, Clark! What a play by Terrence Williams. That was a winning play by t -Row. His seventh steal of the game. Johnny Flynn for three. The rebound by Clark. When the ball is loose on the floor, and you have to fight for it. That's when players show their toughness. Anjanat dives on it. He's got possession, but it's just taken away from him by Williams. And a heads-up play to throw that ball long. That is one heck of an assist for Terrence Williams. 
And Williams having another all-round night. 11 points, 6 assists, 7 steals, 7 rebounds. What a night for Terrence Williams. He can dominate a game without scoring. There aren't many players that can do that, and he can do it. Here comes Routens. Here comes Stevendorf. Here comes Flynn. An incredible performance by these Syracuse players over the last four nights. A total of seven overtimes. They will ultimately fall short in their bid to win the Big East Championship, but that should not diminish what they have accomplished. Incredible courage shown by Johnny Flynn and his teammates. They are absolutely spent, drained emotionally and physically. Uh, the contrast between a team that's given everything and has absolutely nothing left and a team that is about to be crowned champion of, in my judgment, the toughest conference in the country. Johnny Flynn either cannot bear to watch or does not have the strength to lift his head and see what's going on in the court right in front of him. Now you can make a case, even though Louisville's going to win this championship, can you make a case for Johnny Flynn as the tournament MVP? I think you can make a great case. I mean, there's, there's not been a tougher player in this championship. And I think I would lean toward Earl Clark. And Earl Clark has had a magnificent run in this tournament and has been the most valuable player of the Louisville team. And they are the undisputed champion of the Big East. There's Joseph at the line. And Terrence Williams smile radiating around Madison Square Garden. Always an outgoing, expressive young man and awfully excited. Given his senior season about claiming for the regular season and a postseason tournament title. A hug for Andre McGee, a hug for Earl Clark. And how special is this for Rick Pitino to win a championship in Madison Square Garden? Not far from where he grew up. Now, this Louisville program has not been in the Big East that long. And while we have a moment, I want to thank not one but two great crews, Jay, who have worked with us over the last four days here in New York, both Garrett and Chip Dean and also Scott Matthews and Mike Schwab. Ken Menard, Joe McCoy, Kate Leonard, Tyler Churchill, Drew Irvine, Steve Stetz, Jess Ganella, Brett Walensky, Brian Zwolinski, Dave Kors, and John LaBombarda handling, handling stats. And Sean McDonough, Bill Raftery, Len Elmore, Doris Burt, Alan Hopkins. It has been a lot of fun, and it has been, as you said, it's been an honor and a privilege to be at these games over the last few days. An extraordinary championship and an extraordinary team in Louisville that has won both the regular season and now the Big East tournament title. And looking at the very real possibility of a one seed, the Syracuse Orange will finish up at the runners-up. Here in the Big East also looking at a favorable seed as they head into the NCAA tournament. It was an eight-point lead at the half for Syracuse. The Orange ran out of gas. Louisville wore them down with their depth and their defense and their talent and their execution. And congratulations to Rick Pitino and the Louisville Cardinals, Big East champions. Fourth year for the Big East Conference, the Louisville Cardinals secure their first Big East Tournament title. We should mention Johnny Flynn is the MVP of the Big East Championship. Louisville placed two players on the first team, Earl Clark and Terrence Williams. Eric Devendorf was also on the first team, as was Devin Ebanks of West Virginia and A.J. Price of Connecticut. So Flynn takes the individual honors. But Terrence Williams and the Cardinals are the champions of the Big East. Tremendous heart and courage shown by Syracuse. But an outstanding performance, especially in the second half of this final game by Louisville. Their defense was spectacular. They just shut down Syracuse completely.